Good morning, church. Happy Marathon Sunday. Uh, Before we begin Mass today, uh, we have a new song for communion that we'd like to rehearse a little bit so you get a chance to sing it before communion time. Uh, It's not in your hymnal, but it is in your worship aid if you'd like to pull up your device. Uh, This is the communion song, Rejoice and Be Glad. But the good news is it's also very simple. So if you'd like to repeat after me, we'll learn it in little chunks. It starts like this. Rejoice, be glad, for heaven is coming. Try that part. Rejoice, be glad, for heaven is coming. We get to do it again. Rejoice, be glad, for heaven is coming. Yeah, and the third phrase is a little different. Rejoice, be glad, for heaven is coming to you. Let's do that together. Rejoice, be glad, for heaven is coming to you. So why don't we listen to the whole thing once, and then we'll sing the whole thing all together. Rejoice, be glad, for heaven is coming. Rejoice, be glad, for heaven is coming. Rejoice, be glad, for heaven is coming to you. All together. Rejoice, be glad, for heaven is coming. Rejoice, be glad, for heaven is coming. Rejoice, be glad, for heaven is coming to Excellent. Thank you very much. Okay, so welcome. Good morning. Welcome to Old St. Mary's Church as we celebrate the Eucharist on this, the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The music and readings for this Mass can be found on page 1276 in the back of your hymnal or in this week's worship aid. So feel free to follow along on your phone or device if you'd like. Just click the Sunday Worship Aid link on the front page of our parish website, oldstmarys.com. Presiding at liturgy is Father Schoberly, and preaching is Father Johnson. And our gathering song is number 847, Plenty Good Room, 847. Plenty good room, plenty good room, plenty good room in my Father's kingdom. Plenty good room, plenty good room, just choose your seat and sit down. I would not be Should call on 
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, as we begin our worship, let us pray for ears to hear the word of God. Lord Jesus, you are the word of God dwelling in our midst. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the word who speaks to us today. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you help us to hear your voice. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O Lord, may your grace at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. I prayed, and prudence was given me. I pleaded, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred her to scepter and throne, and deemed riches nothing in comparison to her. Nor did I liken any priceless gem to her, because all gold in view of her is a little sand. And before her, silver is to be accounted mire. Beyond health and comeliness, I loved her, and I chose to have her rather than the light. 
because the splendor of her never yields to sleep. Yet all good things come together in her company and countless riches at her hands. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, indeed the word God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating even between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. No creature is concealed from him, but everything is naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must render an account. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up, knelt down before him, and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered him, Why do you call me good? There is no one good but God alone. You know the commandments, you shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud, honor your father and your mother. The man replied and said to Jesus, Teacher, all of these I have observed from my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You are lacking in one thing. Go, sell what you have, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At that statement, the man's face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. So Jesus again said to them in reply, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were exceedingly astonished and said among themselves, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For human beings, it is impossible, but not for God. All things are possible for God. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, it's another uh, Chicago Marathon Day. Thankfully, a much more normal one than last year. And I learned uh, from the TV news the other evening, and then I saw it confirmed in an article in the Chicago Tribune this morning, that as a fundraising effort, uh, one person is running the Chicago Marathon and then immediately getting on a plane and flying to Boston to run the Boston Marathon tomorrow, a race that had been postponed from this past April. I mentioned this to a friend of mine who has run the Chicago Marathon several times, and he was amazed and said, gee, I hope he doesn't cramp up in Boston when he tries to run again. And all I could think about was cramping up on that plane, on that flight to Boston. Perhaps some of us are planning to participate in the hot chocolate run in Grant Park this November, the one where the runners and walkers enjoy a delicious post-race party of hot chocolate and chocolate fondue at the finish line. Now that sounds like a wonderful race. Early in uh, September, I spoke with one of our old St. Mary's parishioners who was training to do the Chicago Half Marathon. And the Sunday following the race, she reported that she had finished the race and she was pretty pleased with her time. The weeks of training had paid off. We admire, don't we, those who endeavor to do the best they can to be good at something who make all the effort necessary to become so. Athletes train seriously and strategically for their sport. Years of preparation, proper diet, and honing one's skills are a necessary prelude to a hope for successful endeavor. Many physical and personal sacrifices are made. Many competitions and long, grueling hours of practice are required. But in the end, when the trophy is awarded, when the finish time is announced, 
or that cross the finish line photo is received, it all seems worthwhile. Likewise, for musicians and dancers and singers and actors who spend years practicing and honing their craft, so also for those who are willing to dedicate years of their lives studying, interning, preparing to be doctors, dentists, lawyers, engineers, teachers, priests, religious. No sacrifice is deemed too costly, no effort too great. With these thoughts in mind, we turn to today's scripture readings, where we are challenged to contemplate our willingness to do our best to excel, not just as athletes, or not, as, not just at scholarship or art or business, but our willingness to do our best to give our all to grow as faithful, spirit-filled Christians, disciples of Jesus. Solomon, who's uh, featured in today's first reading, is an admirable example, told by God that he could ask for anything, make any request, and it would be granted. Well, he didn't ask for wealth or health. He didn't ask for power or good looks. He prayed for wisdom. In today's second reading, the author of the letter to the Hebrews explains that people that we are all called to allow the Word of God to penetrate our hearts, our minds, and spirits with its challenge and its truth, with its power to form and transform, to purify, and to inspire. At first, the a man who runs up to Jesus in today's Gospel story seems willing. He's eager to be wise in the ways of God, and he asks Jesus what he must do to share everlasting life. Jesus' advice to keep and live the commandments? Well, that's met by the man's sincere acknowledgement that he's fulfilled those requirements. Then, like the athlete or actor or musician or student who must go the extra mile to excel, the man is challenged by a loving Jesus to do one thing more. We're told at that the man's face fell and he went away sad. Jesus' disciples marveled at his words and deduced that if this were the requirement for salvation, then salvation seemed an impossibility. But Peter and company were still thinking of salvation as a human achievement rather than as God's gift. With God, counseled Jesus, all things are possible, even the seemingly impossible the one more thing. Here in today's scripture readings, I'm reminded that in just a few weeks, we'll be celebrating All Saints and All Souls Days, a special time for remembering those who have gone before us and reflecting upon how they have responded to Jesus saying to them, there's just one more thing I'd like you to do. Their lives and today's scriptures cause us to reflect. In many areas of our lives, we are willing to ex extend great effort and make many sacrifices to excel. How about in the most important endeavor of our lives? Jesus challenges us, as he did his disciples who walked with him, how willing are we, with God's help, to exert equal or greater efforts, to make equal or greater sacrifices to be faithful and holy Christians and disciples of Jesus. May our favorite and most familiar saints be examples, be inspiration for us, and may they pray for us.
Together, together, let us profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The rich young man ran up to Jesus, knelt and brought his needs before the Lord. We now turn to God presenting the needs of our world and of this community. May the church hold fast to the demands of the gospel and be in solidarity with those who are poor, exploited, and alienated, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That public figures will prudently, justly, and compassionately use the resources of our fragile planet to aid those who suffer from hunger, war, and other hardship, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. You have created the diversity of peoples of the world and gifted the indigenous people of our country with many treasures of wisdom, spirit, and vision. Help all of us to grow in respect and appreciation of those who first lived on these lands, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick will be comforted by loving friends and family and be quickly restored to health, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That Henri Tigmedash, Dr. T, and all those who have died, especially Albert Bruzzini, will be welcomed to the heavenly banquet, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions we hold in prayerful silence. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We also continue to remember those people who are joining us from home online, we think about what their prayers may be as they speak them aloud in their houses. For all of these prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord. Gracious God, accept us and these prayers that we place before you with confidence through Christ our Lord. As always, thank you for your financial support of the ministries here at Old St. Mary's. You who are joining us from home may mail your contributions directly to the parish office or donate online by clicking the Give button at oldstmarys.com. Thank you all for your blessings and generosity. Let's sing number 764. Take, oh, take me as I am. 764. Take 
Pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, accept the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, 
may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Paul, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. And may this sacrifice of our reconciliation, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing seen from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. taught us to call God Father, so we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We can be Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other some sign of Christ's peace. Sin. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof and only say the word.
Let us pray. O Lord, we entreat your majesty most humbly that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Thank you once again for joining us in prayer and worship, live in person or live in person online. Uh, may God continue to bring us together and help us through one another's prayers. The Paulus Fathers continue to thank you for your generosity to our Hope for the Future capital campaign. It has made a big difference, and uh, please see Parish Newsletter for additional details on all of that. Our Just One Item collection is next weekend, the third weekend of the month, when shopping considering purchasing something extra for our neighbors at St. James. If everyone at Old St. Mary's brings in just one additional item, we can accomplish so much. So a bar of soap, roll of toilet paper, toothpaste, shampoo, whatever. Uh, container, just one item makes such a big difference. As I'm sure you're aware, masks continue to be required for everyone over the age of two at mass and throughout our building. A reminder that tomorrow we are, will be closed for the holiday, so, but there will still be the 8.30 mass tomorrow morning. As we look toward the All Saints, All Souls Day celebrations in November, please note that the book for the names of the dead is available on November 2nd. We will pray those names out loud, so you're welcome to add to that list. And be sure to check the oldstmarys.com and the bulletin about liturgical ministry opportunities and the survey concerning our 6 p.m. Sunday night mass. So far, we're up to 15 people who are interested in the 6 p.m. Sunday night mass. Now that's not enough to really get us rolling because we also need ministers and all of that. But if you're interested and it, it's nagging at the back of your brain, I need a six o'clock mass sometimes, go ahead, look at the website and check the bulletin for the ways that you can make sure we get it in place. So thank you for your help with that. And of course, we continue to need ushers, greeters, lectors, EMs, sacristans, and altar servers. We thank Edward for his first time service today, so let's congratulate him. Thank you all. Have a great week. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This Mass has ended. Go now to share your faith. And let's sing number 652, O Spirit All-Embracing 652. <laughs>